Hey everybody, it's Scotty from Scotty's Record Shop with a an artist profile, but at the same time a tribute. Uh, I've done a few of these. The tribute part of it is an easy pickup with this particular artist. Um, we are in the week, uh, at least me recording this, we're in the week of the 40th anniversary of the death of Jim Croce. Jim Croce died on September 20th, 1973 in a, in a plane crash. Uh, and I figured since this is we're coming up on the 40th anniversary of his passing, it'd be kind of nice to do an artist profile of him. Uh, I have most everything by him that you know that matters. I guess you'll. There were a lot of compilations that came out after he died. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I've, I've picked a couple of them that are on vinyl that are probably notable. Um, start off in 1966 talking about an album that he put out uh he got married to his wife ingrid in 1966 uh with wedding money they got 500 dollars from somebody and uh I, from my understanding it was under the condition that he, he would use that to record an album you can't record an album for uh, 500 dollars nowadays and get it pressed he had 500 copies of this uh thing called facets um, printed 1966. I have a, a digital copy of it uh, I found a long time ago, but I obviously 500 copies. It was distributed to friends and family for the most part. Um, I don't have one. I've seen one though. I've actually held an actual copy of that in my hand uh, at a record show a long time ago in Massachusetts. It was not for sale. It was just a display thing that somebody somehow had gotten a copy of it. Um, but like I said, I have a digital copy of it. It's very interesting. It's very folky. Um, anyway, Jim Croce kind of was, wasn't was serious about music. Uh, there was some recordings of him prior to that. And I'll get to that actually as we go through these. Um, but the first record that we start out with came out in 1969. Originally pressed on, on Capitol Records. Uh, Jim and his wife Ingrid made an album together entitled Croce. I have never seen a copy of that uh, on the actual Capitol label. I've seen some reissues, and I have a reissue on that ever-loving popular Pickwick label. <laughs> oh, God, Pickwick. But, you know, they've issued some things that we wouldn't otherwise have on vinyl. So this is not a hard album to find, per se. Like I said, it's on the... This was printed... I don't know, early 70s. That's the label for that one. Um, he was doing a lot of recording, a lot of demos and stuff, all through 66 through 71. He finally gets signed um, to ABC Records in 71, gets an album out in April of 72, and... Bam, he's a superstar almost. It's one of these silly overnight sensations which, which took 10 years to get. But um, the first album that we really know by Jim Croce is this one. You don't mess around with Jim. This is a um, original pressing gatefold with all the lyrics on the inside. And um, Mr. Croce, I'll show you the album itself. If I can get it out. <laughs> the original. You guys from way back then know that sleeve. And um, there's your ABC label right there. Right there. Anyway, great album. Um, had a couple hits. It actually has the single Time in a Bottle on it, but it wasn't a hit at the time, and I'll explain that. It wasn't even issued initially. The record company just didn't see that one, even though it eventually became a number one hit for them. In, um, and that was issued in 72. In, um, I believe, July of 73, he was on tour for this album when he passed, actually. The album was called Life and Times. This is the album that has Bad Bad Leroy Brown and a bunch of other fantastic tracks. Here's your inner... Uh, I got a terrible cold going, guys. I apologize. <clears throat> Here's your back cover. Um, again, let me pull out the vinyl anyway. And this is on a little bit of a different looking label. There you go. Durham, and these all were affiliated labels, though. So. Um, 
anyway, on um, he was on tour for this label for this particular record uh, when he died um, in a in a tragic plane crash. He actually had just gotten done recording his follow up album, and the the a lot of just ironic weird things like the song "Time in a Bottle" was shown in a TV movie uh, in July of '73, and the record label was getting pounded, the radio stations, everybody, we want this song, it's a great song, it was just an obscure track, they issued that, it wasn't an intentional thing, obviously, um, you know, they didn't plan on him dying, but Time in a Bottle was, was issued, the single, the day after he passed away, it was set to be issued on that day, and he unfortunately died the day before, so it's just, a song originally written for his unborn son at the time, AJ, um, but it took on an entirely different meaning on his passing. I can't even imagine being his wife, just losing him and then having to hear that song. Because I remember when that came out in 73, and it was everywhere. You just couldn't get away from that song. It was such a huge mega hit, and it was fueled by the fact that he had just died. It was everywhere. So, I mean, that poor lady just had to hear that song over and over and over again. Anyway, in December of 1973, they issue... Um, this particular album, I've Got a Name, which, like I said, he finished recording uh, like a week or so before he passed away. Um, this does have an inner sleeve, and I'll show you that. There it is right there. It's not out of focus, it's just the way the picture is. Um, and, again, on the ABC label, I happen to really, I think... Um, I've got a name. is just my favorite song by Kochi. Um, I, I just something I don't. I can't explain. I can't explain it. I've tried to explain it to people, but I feel like he had just turned the turned around and just started going in a newer direction. I mean, even though it was kind of a folky kind of singer songwriting sensitive type of thing that he had been known for, the niche that he had found. I, there was something just about that song. It was more polished. It was more strings and things. I just felt that he was developing as, a, as an artist. It was such a shame. Anyway, 74. Uh, he's passed away. His wife finally starts to get control of the financial situation because it was a mess. The record industry is a pretty evil, messed up thing. And they weren't getting royalties. They should have been. And it was just a bad thing. So Ingrid started a lot of legal battles to... To rectify that, 1974, this album came out, and this was honestly the first album that I got from Jim Croce, uh, 1974, Photographs and Memories, Best Of, and I remember being, you know, like, just like, you know, around 10 or whatever, and seeing the inner sleeve of this, and, and knowing the history, I mean, I, I was a kid, but, you know, I loved my dad, and the thought of losing my dad, and seeing this picture, that's AJ, his son, holding his dad's hat. And that just, you know, just a pitiful, sad picture. Just, you know, this is a wonderful album. If there's only one album that you you, you want to get or need to get or whatever, this one would be it. I'll show you the, the um, thing. At this point in time, we're still on the ABC label. This is the original pressing from 74 when they switched over. But yeah, if you if okay, you only want to get one Croce album, this could be it. There are some really nice CD comps out there now of him. He's just had so many best of greatest hits and stuff thrown out. It's kind of pitiful. This is one of these posthumous releases that was really necessary. I, I this is a great album. The Faces I've Been. This has the stuff. This is kind of a, a compilation of his recordings that weren't hits, the stuff from like 70, 61 through 73, but there's there's um, stuff from his Facets album here, stuff from the uh, from the Croce album, him and his wife, uh, stuff recorded previously, you know, some stuff that he had recorded in studios in like 70, 71, and it's very interesting. Um, this is, it kind of has like a booklet in it, but the great thing about this booklet as well is it's very hard paper. Each page... It's very hard paper. I don't know if you can hear that. Really, really nice packaging. Really nice stories about each period, each song. This was issued in 75. And um, if you are a Croce fan and you don't have this album, this would be highly uh, recommended. The Faces I've Been. I'll show you one more. 
it's another compilation. This is where the compilations really started cranking up, and it got a little ridiculous. But um, this was '77, I believe. This is Time in a Bottle. It's it's a, just the greatest hits collection. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew that was going to happen eventually. I apologize. Um, but anyway, my little tribute to Jim Croce. Um, again, if you don't know who Jim Croce is, it's you know singer songwriter kind of music. It's 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 wonderful music, I I think, but. That's my little tribute to um, to the late, great Jim Croce. Uh, until next time, everybody, peace and love.